Life goes so fast. It was yesterday that I was 19 and now I'm going to be 83. Look at the, look at the, the um, aren't they beautiful? And if you don't get going, suddenly you're at the end. Today we're visiting with our dear friend Rosemary Breen. Rosemary is much loved in the Inverell area, known for her tireless efforts on behalf of the community. Together with her late husband Lawrence, Laurie as we all called him, she was among the first to welcome the Bruderhof community to Australia, and she's been a great friend of our family ever since we arrived as well. Rosemary shared with us insights from her long life. She spoke of her faith, her prayer life, and her hope for the future. So pour yourself a cup of tea and enjoy learning from Grandma Rosemary. You and Lori have been taking in strays yes, for we have forever. Chris's yes. parents being among them. Why? Why do you feel like your house is open? It's never locked. Why do you feel that that's an important part of your life? Yes, it goes back to my mother. Um, we lived in London, and we were in London during the war, and we slept in a cellar under the house, and uh, during the war. My parents um, met three young men from Belgium in church and they were sitting there. They didn't know where to go. They had escaped from, um, from Belgium. They'd come over to London and they didn't, they didn't know anybody. And they came and lived with us for the, for the whole war. And we stayed in contact with them until, until they died, in fact, in, in old age. Um, my mother was particularly um, open to welcoming people and um, I think that's where I got it from. To be honest, I think it's not purely a religious thing. Mm -hmm. I think it's uh, because my mother and, um, and my father, we had open house mm -hmm. and we tended to have open house. But of course you can get many... Hints from the gospel as well, can't you? Yes, you can. <laughs> I was homeless, I was in need, I was hungry, I was thirsty, you know. You, you get that. Uh, in fact, that part of Matthew, Matthew 25, is my, um, the part that really inspires me most in the gospel. One thing that Laurie and I used to say was, everybody who um, comes here is welcome. You know, we don't lock our door. Having had some um, fellows here from prison who have, um, um, well, one in particular who came back and did the house over quietly when we weren't here because he knew we didn't lock the door, I still believe in the innate goodness of people. Mm. Yes. <laughs> We're taught, so long as you see another person, you see God. You see the reflection of God in that person. And um, I think that's influenced me. I really do. I think that, um, I mean, I don't always remember it and I don't always live by it, but that's underneath. One of the things that so many of us today bemoan is the fact that it feels like in society at large we're, we're fracturing, uh, we're losing the ability to empathize properly with each other, to have strong views of our own, um, but to articulate them gently and also to, you know, hold space for listening to other people I think that we have to rely on the common humanity that we have. Um, we don't, first of all, judge people, whether they are Catholic or Bruderhof or what they are, but as fellow human beings. Mm. So we've had many people that come here and live here who uh, have no religion. But it doesn't matter. There's, there's the, the God spirit in all of us, isn't there? Service is a big, has been a big part of your life, mm. still is. Um, why is it important and how does it change throughout your life? Well, I, I think we are served as well, aren't we? Mm -hmm. I mean, all, all people are serving us. I, I think I do very little now. Um, you know, I'm pretty old and um, uh, I haven't the same energy. And yet so many people come here and look after me, bring food and... and uh, the, so service is a two-way thing. It's yeah. not something that you just do, goody-goody. Yeah. Yeah. You're receiving all the time, aren't you? Yeah. Well, I don't believe in the God of denominations, I'm afraid to say. I, I Honestly, I have found God in every denomination and none. And I think they're man-made. 
and um, you know, I mean, I'm a Catholic, but um, I'm at home wherever I go. I've been asked to preach in many of the churches here in Inverell over the years, and I always find that God is present. Well, we always said prayers as a family. I don't know whether that's very common, but always we, we said prayers together. I think the big um, moment for me was later on, finding the difference between saying prayers and praying. Mm. And for me, that was a big, um, it was a big moment of revelation, really, mm -hmm. what praying, because praying, you don't need words even. And, um, and um, we always used to say our prayers, say our prayers, and a lot of it was rote, but to actually learn to pray and to pray sometimes wordlessly was something came as a revelation to me. I can't tell you what age I was, probably well into my adulthood. But um, and even now, I don't um, I don't worry about saying lots of prayers. You know, I I, I think it's um, it's sort of an attitude more, isn't it? It's being in conversation. God's, yeah, and um, and it can be silent. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes it can just be sitting there silently. There is a retreat centre in, in North Wales where Laurie and I spent three months um, in retreat and they send a weekly um, uh, meditation on the Sunday readings mm -hmm. and they're, they're so practical. <laughs> and, and so I, I, that, that's the sort of prayer life I have. It's, very, it's become simpler and simpler and simpler as I get older. One of our viewers asked us recently, why should we bother praying if the outcome's already determined and it's just going to happen anyway? Why should we bother talking to God? What would you say to, to that listener? Well, I think often prayer is changing us rather mm. than changing God's mind. Uh, but it's important that we try and align ourselves with, with God's will. Mm -hmm. And that's why often when you pray for something, well, when I pray for something, I often say, you know, at the end, but thy will be done. Mm. You know, I can pray for something, I can pray for healing for somebody, and then they, they die. Mm. Thy will be done. Mm. And I, also, I think there's mystery, and we don't like mystery. We like an answer, a pat answer to everything, and I think we haven't got pat answers. Yep. <laughs> you know, um, sometimes we have to just be happy to, to um, you know... If we believe God is good, then he then yes. that's enough for us. You've mentioned Laurie a few times, and whenever I come here, I feel his presence in the kitchen where he taught me to cook, yeah. in the living room and the, the creek where he used to play with our sons, at this very table. This table, yes, which he polished. Yeah. <laughs> Tell was, us about Laurie. What shall I say about Laurie? Laurie was... Um, Amara's brother for a number of years. He was a very quiet man. In many ways, he was the opposite to me. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I'm not sure. I, I mean, if, if you look at marriage um, guidance, things probably we should never have married because we were poles apart. Oh, contrary. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we're yeah. But we, but we, we worked very well together. Mm, you sure did. And he was a, um, he was a very erudite man he was a mathematician but he was also very practical and he was the cook mm -hmm. and in fact that is my um downfall because i've never really learned to cook so um i i very basic he was the cook and i was the you know the sous chef i would help him you also shared a combined love of of nature and when i look through your albums they just take you all across through the deserts of australia tell us about some of those adventures well, we went seven times round Australia. Wow. Um, wow. On different, but not on made roads, all through the, the, like the gun barrel track and all the different tracks through the middle of the... And I never cease to wonder at the beauty of the... You know, so many Australians have never been into mm. the, into the centre. They've never been to places where you don't see anybody for mm -hmm. weeks. The colours, the mm. the colours of the of the um, outback, the earth and the sky, oh, yeah. 
And I think if you want to find God, go there. We had such adventures. He would never take a caravan, unfortunately. He would, we only had our little tent. And he thought he thought we would go to places where you couldn't drag another um, vehicle. It wasn't exactly glamping, huh? No, 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 it wasn't. It was very basic. One of the very important Aboriginal parts is Uluru. Mm. Yes. And I remember walking around the base of Uluru and being struck by the, the sense of God there. It is breathtaking, and and you can't, you don't want to speak. Yeah. It's holy ground. Mm -hmm. What would you say to anybody looking for a passion and purpose in their life? How do you find that? Well, that's quite a hard question, Sorry. actually, isn't it? <laughs> How do you find it? I think um, often our society is very selfish, and I think um, if young people can begin to look away just fr from themselves, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. just anywhere, mm -hmm. any, anywhere at all that they can discover need that is not themselves. They're mm -hmm. not looking inwards on themselves. So it's just, often I find the young people today, are, uh, um, they, they, they're tied up with worrying about themselves mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and they've so much to offer. What is it that the world needs that they only they can give? Yeah, I mean, I think I think the young people have so much to offer, and I think they are very generous. Yeah. Most of them are very generous. They're very open. Yeah. And I'll tell you another thing that strikes me: life goes so fast. It was yesterday that I was nineteen, and now I'm going to be eighty-three. And if you don't get going, suddenly you're at the end. And what, what, what do you want to leave? What, what um, you know, little, little things, nothing spectacular, but just little things. What do you want to leave for, um, you know, for the better? How did you get inspired to start the Living Water Project in, in Myanmar? Ah, Living Water. Yes, in 2004, I think it was, or 2005, I was asked by some sisters that I had, I belonged to um, this order of sisters in my early adulthood. And they, I've kept in contact with them. And they asked me if I would go to Myanmar with one of them to see about starting a community there. And I said yes with great enthusiasm and then realised I had no idea where Myanmar was. So I had to quickly look on a map. And it's been closed for 80 years. And we went over with... We, we were innocents in those days. We went and we went all over Myanmar. And then we came back and wrote a report. And we didn't hear anything for a year and a half. And then they, we heard they were going to start a, a community... And Marion, who came with me, Sister Marion, she said, you've got us into this, you have to keep coming. So every year I would go back for a month. I used to teach English to the students. And one of the students said to me, she was going back to her own country, which was in the dry zone, the dry, uh, dry part of the country. And she said there was no, um, they, they didn't have good water. And so I I said, OK, I will finance a tank. And I, well, I financed the tank and I thought that was it. And then she said, is there a possibility for another one and another one? So I began to talk about it. I, I couldn't believe it. And more people began giving me money and I... I they just gave it to me in my hands. I had no, I had no um, organisation or anything. And I think the first 60 tanks, at least, were literally people putting money in my hand. And it was impossible to get it into Myanmar. There were no banks or anything in those days. I had to give it to the sisters who were going to the convent they'd started. And they used to carry the money in for me. We built many tanks. I think we were up to 300 and... 60 now and in fact the Bruderhof have um, I think have financed at least two 
<laughs> and and I visited the the tanks. Well, I've visited all of them, but it's always a joy, you know, to see like Bruderhof in Varel. You know, I joined um, with a group called Global Development Group. Actually, it's been really worthwhile because now it's tax deductible, which mm -hmm. is makes it um, um, more attractive to to donors, and um, they send the money over. If you saw the the photos, and you have seen them, yeah. of people um, coming with their bullet carts and filling the carts with water from dirty ponds and rivers, you would understand how yeah. water is the basis of life. Mm -hmm. And it's been it's been wonderful. You know, when when I go, I always go every year. Well, I have until now, and the people. They, they, it's, they say it's changed their life because they had to spend all that time walking to the river or the dam or wherever it was to get water. Now they can just turn it on. Living water, well, obviously it comes, it's a biblical reference, but it's also that life-giving. Yeah. It's life-giving. Yeah. It, once you have water, it's absolutely fundamental to us. And we, we, we I used to come home literally after every um, visit and I would marvel that I would turn on the tap and water would come out, clean water. And I would thank God every time I turned the tap on, even here. I don't know. Right, so. <laughs> oh, sorry. Oh, oh. We're, no, we're just finishing up. Oh, sorry, I thought we'd finished. <laughs> we, we basically have. Well, Grandma, thank you very much for spending this time with us. And it is always great to hear your wisdom and your stories. And we hope you, our friends, have enjoyed this conversation, and um, can it, all of us, I think, can can apply some of the things that um, Rosemary and Laurie's life can teach us. So, uh, you are my dears. And if you're an in Inverell, you know who to call in on. Your the door is never locked. <laughs> As we, <laughs> so you're very welcome. We won't publish your address. But <laughs> 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 okay. Thank you so much. It's beautiful. I remember the boys when I was climbing that tree there and yes. I see all the birds in the garden. Yeah.